Well, my boy, Demi TV. It's Wave God and this motherfucker. Hey, shout my nigga Demi Tito. Got the song pop like I'm Iggy. All they talking about is last night like I'm Demi. Say you got What's up, Dean family, Dean Nation? Today we're doing a right side reaction to what if this extinct sea monster lived today? We gonna check out what sea monster. You know what it's not called sea monster, sea creature, sea animal. What how it would be if it was alive now in today's time? You feel me, Dean family? So basically, it's a what if. Scenario technology, you can kind of educational thing we're gonna learn about. You feel me? <clears throat> and if you're new to the channel, like, comment, subscribe, and share the video on all social medias. And comment below what reaction you want me to do next. And check out the original video in the description box below. Also, roll to 50k, 100k, a million billion. So click that subscribe button. Let's birthday as a family, as a nation. You feel me? And no further ado, let's get into this reaction. What's the scariest predator under the ocean? <clears throat> the crocodile? Huh, I don't think so. Loch Ness Monster? Please, it never existed. How about the Kronosaurus? Well, it is extinct, but you might be onto something. Let's take a look at what it'd be like if these creatures were still around today. First things first, what on earth was it? The Kronosaurus was a marine carnivore that lived in the cool, high-latitude Aromanga Sea. It covered vast areas of inland Australia between 90 and 120 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous period. So it can still possibly be alive now in the ocean out there, because you motherfuckers don't be searching for that shit. Near complete fossils yeah, so of y'all only found 3% of the Columbia, ocean. Which is a country that has a noted connection to prehistoric reptiles and turtles. This fact makes it extremely possible that the monster I'm about to describe existed worldwide. You might have heard Saurus and thought, oh, it's a dinosaur. But these were actually reptiles. They were the largest member of the Pleosauroidea family, referred to oh, as Pleosaurs. Fossil evidence suggests they wait. That makes sense. Like, huh? In the earth. A lot of creation, a lot of creation, creatures came from the water. Over 20,000 pounds and were roughly 30 feet in length. Just to put that in perspective, the longest crocodile ever measured was a saltwater crocodile by the name of Lolong from the Philippines. It was 20 feet in length Damn. and weighed just under 2,500 pounds. And, it's heavy and, big. and that's still 10 feet shorter and incredibly lighter than the average Kronosaurus. Making the crocodile that seem like nothing more than a glorified goldfish in comparison. Literally. Despite its terrifying length, the most physically daunting feature of the Kronosaurus no. was its head. Its skull was about eight feet long, which was actually proportionally large given the size of its body length. That's Anything that was unfortunate enough to end up inside the Kronosaurus's mouth That's may have us. been given false hope. After all, the teeth of the beast weren't actually that sharp. On second thought, I take that back. Really? I wouldn't feel confident around a toothless snake, let alone being inside the mouth of this monster. Exactly. But like. it's true that the Kronosaurus's teeth weren't sharp, especially when compared to other carnivorous reptiles, such as crocodiles and alligators. The teeth of this prehistoric sea creature were instead conical. This means that they were cone-like in shape. Unfortunately, this lack of sharpness didn't make them less dangerous. The teeth were enormous and could be up to 12 inches long from the crown tips to the what bottom the of the roots. This obviously meant that the Kronosaurus had an extremely powerful body. That's still gonna finish it your was ass. Like, what the to fuck? Be up to 30,000 newtons, which is almost twice as powerful as the bite of a large saltwater crocodile. Because of the bluntness of their teeth, the they weren't suited for twisting their prey once in their grasp. But the size and shape of the teeth made them perfect for simple open and shut biting 
they would have had no problem crushing hard objects such as the toughest of shells any sea turtle could offer. Just like crocodiles, the Kronosaurus is believed to have had a short neck. This may have been an adaptation to allow the beast to successfully catch small evasive animals. Their body, in general, was fusiform and streamlined. This means it was narrowed at both ends and had very little resistance to the flow of water. The Kronosaurus was also so equipped with like four paddle-like limbs. The surface, hind limbs surface. were larger than the front ones. They could span approximately seven feet in diameter. All in all, this set the Kronosaurus up to effortlessly propel itself through the waters and be an ultimate predator. Predator X, if you will. That's the name that was given to the fossil of a creature discovered near Svalbard, a Norwegian island group, in 2009. The fossil was identified as a 50-foot-long, 100,000-pound monster with a bite force of 33,000 pounds per square inch. This might be the highest bite force of any known animal. Although Predator X is yet to be classified as any specific type of animal, it was definitely a pleosaur, like the Kronosaurus. And even mm. if it wasn't Predator X, the Kronosaurus was still most definitely a ferocious titan when it roamed Earth's oceans. The Kronosaurus actually got its name from the Greek mythological figure of Cronus, the father of Zeus. Cronus was viewed as a titan from a generation of super powerful beings. Mm. So what was it that the Kronosaurus, this terrifying monster, well, actually you. feasted on to satisfy its appetite? This creature people. was known to eat sea turtles, squid, and other larger marine reptiles of that time, such as Elasmosaurids and Ichthyosaurs. This suggests that if crocodiles existed in the realms of the Kronosaurus, they too might have turned into lunch for the beast. Literally, There's that's evidence that. from the fossil remains of the Kronosaurus that suggests that they also feasted on sharks. Jeez. Which I know is a disappointment to those of you who view that beast as the king of the ocean. Not when the Kronosaurus was around, my friend. Oh, animals, food. In any case, grounding all kinds of food into small that, pieces that to help like, digest uh, them would have been like, difficult crumbs, without crumbs, small like, teeth. Like, I this explains the presence white, of rounded air, stones found in many of the remains of these eat. sea creatures. Researchers believe these stones may have been swallowed to control buoyancy or to help process food. It's also entirely possible they were accidentally swallowed while feeding on other animals from the sea floor. As if the Kronosaurus even needed to be a meanie with its already existing power and size, there's also evidence to suggest that it indeed might have been. It turns out that after using all its impressive attributes to catch its dinner, the Kronosaurus first liked to play with its food, like wow. a cat does with a mouse. I guess since the That's hunt tough. was so easy for them, they needed to get their fun from somewhere else. Well, I think now you should have a good food. idea about these creatures. So let's ask ourselves what it would be like if they were still around today. And by the way, Let why aren't first, they? Please. Well, the Kronosaurus was completely finished off by the same KT meteor that took out the dinosaurs. How do we really know that ago. for sure? How do we really know that for sure? Event, like, they were coming that's a conspiracy theory. At the end of the day, that's a conspiracy theory that they going to keep running away. going to keep making a popular opinion, mate. A theory, but that's a conspiracy theory. Like, we don't know that for sure. We don't know that for sure. You feel me? They they just tell. They just saying some shit right now. They, they that's That's a conspiracy theory because there's no proof, no evidence, nothing like that. You feel me? Nothing like that at all. You feel me? So don't believe the propaganda that they be saying. You feel me? Because we don't know what happened to the dinosaurs for real. For real. Like the same way how they try to show um. Show people that, oh, all black people start off as slaves. No, we didn't, nigga. Like, that's the propaganda that they want you to believe in. That theory, conspiracy theory, you feel me? And they got these people, they got some people so doctrinated that they go along with the foolishness. Under increased pressure from an even bigger and more vicious family of carnivorous marine reptiles known as mosasaurs. What? You can't always be a top dog, I guess, or rather, top marine reptile. But what if this never happened? 
and they were still roaming Earth. Well, this might be obvious, but can you imagine what kind of impact that would have on sea tourism? Based on the impact that famous movies about sharks and killer whales had, what do you think the presence of a Kronosaurus in the ocean would do to beaches? The very creature that would eat sharks? Nothing, actually. I mean, look what these people see when they see a shark. They get up out of water. Or what happened? They get messed up and ate up. Simple. It's like all this. Oh, well, was it? It's a theory, you feel me? Just saying it, but we won't really know, you feel me? Unless it actually happened, you feel me? Because we don't actually know if these, these animals, these creatures are actually, actually, actually like hate humans or hate things like that, you feel me? Or they just doing their job, you feel me? They just trying to eat. And you just happen to be in their way and again, and you just getting eight. You feel me? Whales for breakfast. Beaches would certainly become a great place to go for a quiet walk, because nobody else would even be there. And what about such activities as boating, surfing, and scuba diving? You think anyone would dare try them, knowing that this thirty-foot beast could? You shouldn't be in that bit, anyways. That that's that should tell you like you shouldn't be here, anyways. Like why are you here? Why are you here? Like, he gonna look at you. You gonna look at him. He gonna be like, why are you here in my water? Why are you here? So give me a good reason why you're here. Like, I'm hungry. Like, I haven't caught no fishes, no no creatures, no animals, or no fish today. You looking like a sweet lick. I'm hungry. If you don't got nothing to feed me, you can, you, 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 you are on the meal today. You feel me? So that's how that bitch gonna. That's how that bitch gonna go. Simple, and it's like, what about the sales stories about these creatures that they be seeing in the ocean? What about them, the skippers' stories? You feel me? Like, what about them? Them guys, they probably seen this creature before, and who knows? This creature might be lurking in the Bermuda Triangle or some of them. Historical, historical, and, and, and mythical, mystic oceans and places like that. You feel me? Lurking beneath them. Let's give humans some credit and assume most of them wouldn't. This would cripple the global sea tourism industry, which is responsible for earning roughly 143 billion dollars every year. Just to make sure this shocking point hits home, the most expensive yacht to ever roam the ocean was called the History Supreme. Its master bedroom was believed to have a statue made of T-Rex's bone wow. and a wall made of meteorite rocks, as well as a 24 karat gold panoramic wall aquarium. That's expensive as fuck for no apparent anyway, reason. this yacht was worth nearly $5 billion. I bet. Meaning you could buy 38 of them with the money lost and potential damages to sea tourism caused by the Kronosaurus. That shit crazy. I'm sure that the yacht's owner was happy the beast never made an appearance in their luxurious aquarium. So luxurious, in fact, that some people... This what you, this what, this what people, this what you, this what the... You got all this money, and you wasted on nonsense and bullshit, when there's people out there that need money, and struggling, and... Bruh. Trying to make ends meet and doing the best they can. And you out here wasting money like this? On meaningless, worthless shit like this? When you could get back to the people, help the people, inspire the people, motivate the people, get some people out of the situation they in. But you out, this shit, what you call fucked up, fucked up people, fucked up in the head, and ain't good decision making. Believe the History Supreme, reportedly owned by some business genius from Malaysia, never even existed. Rumor has it that it was simply an elaborate hoax fabricated by the supposed designer. Oh. Anyway, I don't think the trouble would just stop there. Still People could actually be in serious danger, regardless of being like near the ocean or not. No, I'm not about to tell you that this thing would grow legs, adapt to living on land, and start picking us off one by one. At least, I hope not. I'm just going to point out the no, damage that the Kronosaurus would inflict through its devastating impact on sea trade. In America, 
ocean transit accounts for 76% of national trade. On top of this, more than 100 vital pharma... Well, too bad we got this, um, what you call it going on. ...pharmaceutical products originate in the sea. I'll also state the obvious and point out that the ocean is a huge food source for us humans. The presence of the Kronosaurus could have a great impact on our relationship with the ocean, something we usually take for granted. But wouldn't that actually help? Actually, to be honest, because then they will make it that way that we can start eating fruits, vegetables, and healthy stuff, and like stuff that don't come from the ocean, and stop eating like creature and animals and stuff like that you feel me and serpents and stuff like that and like actually get to the healthy healthier diet process and system you feel me so when they actually like benefit because like they and they belong in the water so what's in the water should be in the water you feel me what's on land should be what's for land right but we cross we cross on um, Cross feed and cross breed and all this other shit. So shit, that shit crazy. Hope you guys like that Dean Found D Nation. Like, comment, subscribe, and share the video on all social media and comment below what reaction and video you want me to do next. See you guys next time. Love you guys. I'm out.